Welcome everybody to the 2023 Kia Sportage, Sportage, depending on where you are in the world. The car with us we have today is the X-Line variant, which is sort of like the middle variant, but it has all the necessary bells and whistles you would want. You can see this is a very hot selling car, not very much visible on the road because there is a huge waiting period and it's a very close fight between this and its closest sibling, the Hyundai Tucson. Let's see how this car is. The front end of the car, as you can see, it's a hit or miss. Some people like it, some people don't like it. I'm on the fence actually, maybe it might grow on me a little better. In fact, this is where I feel that Tucson, you know, wins by a big margin is with the front looks. Uh, you've got the signature Kia Tiger nose grille with all the slats and you've got the fancy headlights uh, with the DRLs and the amber DRLs as well, which actually look pretty good at night to be honest. The whole look is very imposing. You've got a massive grille and then you've got a lower part of the cladding as well, which is also sort of like an air damp to the radiator. You've got very tiny fog lights in the bumper. Again, lots going on. It just comes down to taste. I think it's all subjective whether you like it or not. I know lots of people who have liked it. I know lots of people who haven't and they've criticized and they've called it lots of stuff. Like it looks like a bug, it looks like an insect. Some people have appreciated that it says it's a work of art. That's up to you. Let me know in the comments what you feel about the front looks of this car. It's got the brand new Kia logo. So instead of the Kia round, it just says Kia in that fancy font. And yeah, that's pretty much it from the front. And I like this paint shade that they've given the press car and I think it's pretty unique. And actually I've not seen another Sportage in this color. So it stands out from this point of view as well. The side profile of the Sportage is less funky if I can say that. Uh, very simple side profile. There's some cuts and creases on the doors and the cladding. The rims look really good. These are 19 inch rims which are special to the X-Line variant and they've got some cladding on the fenders and stuff. Overall it's not as funky as the front and I honestly don't think that's a problem because I mean Kia has been over designing the front. They can leave something simple and it just works. You've got nice big windows and it's blacked out because this is the X-Line so there is no chrome. The mirrors are blacked out. You've got blacked out roof rails as well. It just works, especially the black with this paint scheme. I think the dual tone just, just stands out and it just does a really good job. The rear of the Sportage, as you can see, is not as funky as the front. I think the front steals the show, but it's not a bad looking rear. What might seem like a you know uniform LED bar, which other Kia and Hyundai models have, it's not the case here. This is just two individual units, which look pretty good at night. The LED units, they stand out and they have a very sharp cut design to it. The bumper is all about cladding and the cladding extends to the tailgate as well. Uh, pretty unique because normally cladding stays to the bumper as well for many cars. It's got lots of cuts and creases, it's got nice design elements as well but the unique part of stretching onto the tailgate I think that's pretty unique and I think it looks pretty good the tailgate has very minimalistic badging it's got the Kia the Sportage and the X line which is the variant and yeah I mean overall it's something unique that stands on the road and I think it's a job well done by Kia to not go overboard by just you know designing for the sake of it adding cuts and creases which is really really nice uh, another neat integration is the rear wiper you can see it's not there but there is a rear wiper that comes down from the spoiler which is really really cool the similar in how it was integrated into the Tucson uh, perhaps just to maintain that you know the clean lines of the rear overall a well, good job by Kia inside the Kia Sportage as you can see it's a lovely place to be it's still got many funky design elements on the inside like you can see the AC vents which are really really funky uh, and they look pretty unique uh, the overall interior ambience is really nice it's really premium so it's got lots of leather all around you gloss black uh, you've got this nice wooden finish over the dash and you've got some aluminium bits as well which look pretty premium the interior is dominated by this one very big screen which holds everything so you've got the main center console screen which you can control all the features, all the settings, you've got the Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. It's not wireless in this variant, but it does the job with the wired. You've got the nice speedometer console, uh, which is very clear. It gives nice readouts uh, and it changes, you know, if you change the drive mode, it changes the graphics, which again is really nice. Uh, you've got the blind spot assist as well, which turns on the camera on the speedometer, which again is very clear. The whole display works really well. And this one display is the new theme of all the Hyundai and Kia cars. I think it's visible in the new Telluride 
ride in the new Palisade as well. You've got a touch screen panel here, which is my only grouse in the whole interior, is that you can either change your volume or change the temperature and the fan speed. You cannot do both at once. I know people don't do it together, but you have to flick through the setting to either goes like i'm in the audio setup right now and if i want to change the fan speed i need to touch and then i can do the fan speed it's just one display touch panel which changes function which is kind of annoying my only gloss in the whole interior everything else feels really nice you've got gloss black which is a dust magnet but you can keep clean you've got this nice uh, stubby little gear not gear lever for the you know shifting you've got the engine start stop button on the console as well heated seats cool seats all the functions here and the drive modes and everything here you've got nice storage here and you've got lots of cup holders which are really really big you've got a nice storage cupboard here as well and yeah it's very practically well thought you've got a wireless charger as well you can keep your phone here again everything feels very well planned very very well built and feels very premium and luxurious with all the leather and everything the steering wheel is a three spoke steering you've got paddle shifters you've got all the cruise control and the volume buttons here and the big kia logo uh, this feels a little too simplistic maybe because maybe i'm used to the hyundai the four spoke five spoke ones which look really premium but yeah otherwise it feels really really nice in here and you can spend long hours because the seats are also really really comfortable got lots of adjustments lots and it's very comfortable it's very nicely padded and it look good as well because you've got the cross stitching on the back which looks really good again overall Kia and Hyundai just know how to make a car feel premium and this car is no different now I'm in the rear seat of the Sportage and as you can see it's a lovely place to be. I've got ample of legroom. This seat is actually further than what I usually would have and I still have so much place to put my feet in the seat so much knee room so much headroom there's just so much space around even though this is an all black interior the windows are pretty big and the panoramic sunroof lends in a lot of light which is so nice you've got the same touch of aluminium and wood and leather all around which feels very premium the seats uh, the under thigh support is really good the backrest is really good obviously the backrest is adjustable as well which is really nice uh, you've got seat pockets and eel and you've got usb charging ports into the seat which is very unique you've got ac vents in the back as well and if you roll down this you've got two cup holders as well again what else do you need and a little magic trick both rear seats not the middle one obviously but the rear seats both have heated facilities as well which is again very useful for a country like canada just brilliant packaging and addition of features in the rear here to make it so appealing uh, to the rear the rear passengers as well which not many car makers think of fantastic job by kia to make the rear just as appealing as the front now i'm behind the wheel of the kia sportage Let's get the numbers out of the way. This car has a 2.5 liter naturally aspirated petrol engine that is mated to an 8 speed gearbox. The engine produces about 183 brake horsepower and this car weighs about 1.7 tons. Let's see how this car drives. Slot the gear lever into drive and you set off and you instantly notice that the low end torque is actually really really nice. Uh, you don't actually have to mash your foot. Uh, to you know get going which is a really nice feature especially in stop start traffic it really makes it easy to uh, drive uh, when you are cruising in you know city speeds you'll find that the steering wheel is really light uh, which makes it very convenient to drive and the same steering weighs up sufficiently on highway speed as well uh, you can change the drive mode and that does alter the steering geometry as well and it does make it a bit heavier uh, which is always a nice you know pleasant addition and you can see there's a slight lag and then the engine pulls there's a slight lag from up to say 2000 rpm but uh, post that it pulls pretty pretty well you turn and then you have the blind spot monitor which is a very useful addition and then you just turn you floor it obviously you can control the gears through the paddles as well and if i downshift i can hold the gear but it doesn't hold the gear it drives it drives cleanly but it auto upshifts at red line as you can see it's really really comfortable on pumps even though this car has 19 inch rims which are pretty big for an suv uh going over this rough stuff it's actually pretty soft and it doesn't transfer all the bumps to your back which is honestly it's a great job by kia for the suspension tuning for this car you don't feel anything at all again this car is not meant to be driven you know like a cross-country basher where you just take it off the road and do although 
from various videos on YouTube, Kias and Hyundai's have been proven to be capable off-roaders. So this does have the you know mud mode and uh, snow mode and sand mode. If you do do decide to take the tricky stuff, but otherwise this car drives really really well. And the gearbox is most of the time in the right gear. It does take sometimes it delays. There's a lag to you know kick down to downshift at the right gear. As you can see, I just went over some train tracks and barely I could feel anything, which is really commendable for the suspension tuning. As I was saying, the gearbox does feel a bit laggy sometimes. Obviously, you can manual override with the paddles, but it's still a bit slow. You know, it's not the best gearbox. It's not the best dual clutch around. You would find maybe from Volkswagen or maybe Ford or maybe any other, but it's sufficient. And that's the whole mantra this car is when you drive. It's sufficient. The engine is sufficient. The handling is sufficient but i think better than that the ride is really good what's not sufficient is the fuel economy i've been averaging 12 to 13 liters per 100 in city traffic which is on the higher side compared to other cars in the segment i wish it was a bit more fuel efficient maybe if hyundai gave in the 1.6 turbo that the k5 have has it produces the same horsepower so it could have been a bit more fuel efficient but in this case, it's not that efficient. On the highway, it is. On the highway, it goes up to 7, 7.5, 8 liters per 100, which is perfectly acceptable. But the city fuel economy is not the best. And I think that comes down to the big displacement this car has. Otherwise, it's nice. You know, the driving dynamics is just comfortable. It's perfect. It's just what, what one would need in a day-to-day -day driving. And that's what Kia has nailed it perfectly. In conclusion, the 2023 Kia Sportage. Well, where do I start? The front end is not its, you know, the best point, but it might work for people. The space inside is really good. It's really spacious in the front, in the back. The boot is really big to haul all your luggage. The ride quality is good. The 2.5 liter naturally aspirated engine is punchy, although not the fuel, most fuel efficient engine in its segment, but it's really, really punchy, especially for cruising or for overtakes. What else do you need? And what makes this deal even better is that the car is priced, this specific variant is priced at $34,000 Canadian, which I think is great value compared to, you know, how other cars are priced in the segment and the whole car industry that is currently going haywire because of the semiconductor shortage and everything. At $34,000 Canadian, I look at this car differently, you know, if I keep the price in value. I might just live with the front end if it's priced that well. What else do you want? Good job IKEA by pricing it aggressively compared to its competitors. I really liked it. Hope you like it as well. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time.